uh, that's on the shoulder. It might be from the head. Okay, you get the idea that uh, they keep the clothing together with the fibers, if the fibers are found on the clothing. Um, uh, as usual, don't just uh, take the fiber and try to take the entire object. Uh, if it's a carpet, if it's possible, say a mat uh, that, uh, that, that you know you want to take the samples from, or that might be a suspect, or the, 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 the fibers are on this mat, take the whole mat. If it's possible, take the whole carpet, take the whole carpet. Uh, if they allow you, and I have no idea if they will, uh, cut away the carpet uh, that has <clears throat> the fibers that uh, of interest, or that may have the fibers of interest. Um, <clears throat> again, if it's possible, take the surroundings also. Very often it's not, so in that case you just have to take only the fibers. However, if it's possible, take whatever's around it too. That's the standard case, the standard way of collecting evidence. Take what's around it as well. Um, if bodies we have been wrapped in cloth, let's say, to conceal them or to uh, transport them, uh, even if they're suspected to be ever been wrapped in a cloth, check the cloth and check the, check the body for fibers. Maybe we'll find the cloth and maybe that cloth will find some other evidence to connect it to the suspect. So uh, always check bodies for fibers if they've been wrapped in cloth. Um, also, if you can find the cloth they're wrapped in, check that. Um, who knows what that will, uh, what, what evidence that will lead to, uh, to find out who was using the cloth to wrap the body. And one of the ways of picking up fibers with adhesive tape, uh, another way is with tweezers, of course. Um, yet a third way, which is actually kind of popular and easy, um, is to use... Uh, basically, a vacuum, a vacuum with um, with let's say uh, a little screen in front of it, so it sucks all the air out uh, up uh, into it. Uh, but hairs will get will not be able to get into the vacuum; they'll get caught in the screen. So you'll suck the air through the screen. Hair, hair, and fiber evidence will stick to the screen. So then you can just collect from the screen, collect all the fibers and hair evidence. So that's a very um, uh, a convenient way to do it. Nevertheless. Uh, again, it's small fibers inheritance is probably the most tedious and difficult task for uh, the crime scene investigator to collect. So let's uh, summarize a little bit. You should know about the hair, the parts, you know, the cuticle and all that. The growth stages, the antigen, catagen, telogen uh, stage, what happens then. Um, know how to uh, how the hair is examined, including the mitochondrial DNA, how to collect it. Um, and also know about different kinds of fibers, polymers, um, how they're analyzed, including the IR microspectrophotometer, also polarized light, and, and even the UV uh, and visible light microspectrophotometer. That's also useful. Um, know about collecting fiber evidence, how it's hard. Know about the benefits and limitations of fiber and hair evidence. It's class evidence, but again, it is very useful. Uh, okay, so for those with a book and want to do some problems, these are problems that, that relate to hair and fiber evidence. You'll find them here. And it continues over here.